Amen. Hallelujah. We are blessed because of the ministry of, you know, singing. We are so blessed because there are people who just love to give. There are people who just love to smile and, and do something for the glory of the Lord. I believe that's the picture of a real church. The picture of a church is a church that is a ministering church. A church has something to do with people, not necessarily the building. Ang sa unang mga panahon, pag sinabi nilang church as building, tinatawag nila yung mga synagogue or temple. And one time, of course, Paul mentioned the word temple. Sabi niya, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So we clearly understand that when we talk about the church, it is the abode of God. He is present there. He is there. So we praise the Lord for that talent. Keep on singing for the Lord. He first came to Capitol many years back. Uh, he was invited by Pastor Ferris at that time. I do not know whether you sang at that time. Umawit ka ba? No, in there. But we invited him to ECFC and, and some other. So, pambato namin ito pag when it comes to mga events. But anyway, hallelujah. I woke up sound and uh, I really sleep through the night. I, I arrived very early in the morning. Nakatulog ako mga around 3.30 to 4 o'clock in the morning. I just arrived from from the bow. So, because yung, remember yung general na, who had been attending our church, palagi na kaupo dyan sa likuran. And so, I officiated a kanilang wedding anniversary last night. It was, it was awesome. I mean, this, uh, last, uh, yesterday afternoon. My first time to officiate a wedding sa isang general. <laughs> and, uh, na, Nanginginig pa rin tayo, by the way. Uh, there is no, no one that is expert when it comes to doing things for the glory of the Lord. Our series has something to do with one God. Then we already started sharing about one God, one Lord. And then the last time, it was one, Lord, one God and one mission. And now we will be talking about one God, one church. Isalangan church. Okay? Isalangan church. And the only problem we have is that a lot of people are claiming that their church is the real church. Now, if somebody comes to us and say, this is my church, that's not your church. That is God's church. Capital City, Foursquare Church, is not the church of anybody. This is the church of the living God. Amen? So we have no right claiming na a church nothing where we are going is actually yun na sa atin yan. Yeah, but said, let's go to our church. Let's go to Capital City. I think it would be better for us to invite people. Let's go to Capital City for Square Church. Because that is where the people of God congregate. So I will be talking about that today. And uh, again, I would like to ask everybody to please rise. <coughs> I would be reading from Matthew chapter 16. A very... Uh, I, w I would not say well-known or familiar. Dahil we do not want yung familiarity of the word. But that's something that is so special as far as God, Jesus Christ, and his disciples were concerned. Because this is the first time that Jesus Christ declared that he is going to establish a church. And of course, history will tell us that the church was given birth during the day of Pentecost. But before that, God has already established a church in his heart. Verse or chapter 16. You've probably heard about the conversation between God, I mean, Jesus Christ with the disciples. And this is where it started. So verse 13. When Jesus came into the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, Who do men say that I am? Or that I, the Son of God, or Son of Man, I am. So they said, some say John the Baptist, some Elijah, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, but who do you say that I am? 
Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus answered and said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjuna, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades or Hades shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you have loosed on earth will be loosed in heaven. Then he commanded his disciples that they should tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Father, we thank you for the word of your truth. I pray, O oh Father, that you will minister to us once again. We are here for a reason. You have established the church for a reason. And we have come today to recognize your Lordship because you are the Lord of the church. There is no one that can claim that we establish the church. It is you. So help us to understand this truth today. Help us to reveal to the world around us that Jesus is the one who established the church. It is your church. And we have one God and we have one church. And we give you all the praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Now, of course, you, we fully understand, or perhaps we heard about some preaching taken from this passage of the scripture. When, uh, when everybody's wanting to, to know more about God and uh, to know more about his power, he already told them that there is so much power that I already have given you. In fact, he said, just a while ago, I already have fed. I mean, what are you asking for? Why are you asking for more? You know, once, one evidence, one powerful evidence that Jesus has done to many people was not enough. But then these disciples or Jesus Christ was really wanting to know deep into the hearts of the disciples. He knows them. He knew them. But the Lord Jesus Christ as a way of letting us express ourselves and understand him the way we understand him. That's why he asked this question, who do you think? Who do you think these people say that I am or who am I? And, uh, and in this course, you know, now the Lord Jesus Christ mentioned that because when he was looking around, I mean, walking around, ministering to people, people began to see the images or the thing, particular ministry that they were doing. He was like Sabina and the Baptist because Jesus Christ would always find himself in the desert talking to his father. He was by himself. And so they have noticed that John the Baptist was doing the same. John the Baptist abode was actually the desert. He was just wearing simple coat, parang sakloat lang palagi, and then he ate locust and honey. Yun lang. But you find that in, in the desert. And because of that, when they saw Jesus always doing that, is that he could be John the Baptist, who was risen from the dead. Remember, John the Baptist was killed. He was beheaded. He was beheaded. And then later on, he said, well, you know what? Some people say you are Jeremiah. Jeremiah, and uh, People were actually thinking about him as Jeremiah because Jeremiah was not actually accepted by the people when he came. He was there ministering to the kings, ministering to the people, and he was crying out his heart for all these people. He would preach the gospel, but the people would not listen to him, especially the people up there, on the top echelon of the society. They were, not, they, are not, they were not listening. In fact, he was considered a traitor because he was prophesying a lot of bad things against the, the, the people of Israel simply because of their sin. 
And because of that, they took it as an offense. And sabi nila, why can't you say good things to us? And Jeremiah said, there's nothing good that I can say to you except the promises of God. But he would proclaim a lot of punishment or judgment that these people will actually experience in life. And some people would say he is Elijah. Elijah is the same thing. He would be walking the wilderness and preaching and doing something good, a lot of miracles. But then finally, Jesus became to be very, very personal. Now here's the thing. What have you heard about Jesus? Is this all that you have experienced in life? When you heard about the preaching of Jesus and somebody tells you that God is good, you go to this church because there is so much healing there. You go to this church because you can be inspired. Is that all that we heard about Jesus? You see, these are information about who Jesus really is. And they are good. And I believe that that is good, one good thing that we can start our faith with. Now, we hear a lot about what's happening. It is a testimony. But then the Lord wanting more, and he wants to be very personal as far as you and me is concerned. The question, therefore, that God has asked, how about you? Who do you think I am? In other words, have we come to the point wherein we already have established strong and very close relationship? Don't you know that you only know God if we have close relationship with him? You may know a lot about somebody, but unless you stay with them and talk to them, then you will know him very personally. Amen? When we were courting our wives before, we know about our wife or your husband. We heard about who she is. There are a lot of negative things perhaps that you have heard about them. But then when you are getting serious about pursuing your love, your relationship, then you get to know more about him or her inside your heart. And I believe that that was exactly what the Lord was telling or asking the disciples. He was wanting them, or he was wanting to, to let them express kung talaga bang naintindihan nila na who Jesus is sa kanilang buhay. So, nung sinabi na niya, pero how about you? But how about you? Ano masasabi niyo when it comes to me? Ano masasabi? We have been living, we have been together for a long time, for three years. We have been ministering. You heard about a lot about me. Yung mga prescription or yung mga description given to to the people coming from the people who were observing me. But how about you? We have been living together. We have been walking together for three years now. Do you really know me? And one good thing about this is that when even, even when we feel like we are short in our knowledge, sa pagkilala ng Lord, the Holy Spirit comes to reveal to us who He is. And that would be the most exciting thing that one can experience because you begin to be a seeker. You begin to be a seeker. You see, when you are sick, you just simply say, Lord, I just trust you to heal me. Now, in many cases, probably we will be looking for someone or something that we can, we can do para maharap ma, matulungan tayo. But when it comes to good relationship with the Lord, you just simply say, Lord, I entrust my life to you. My safety, my future, my protection is in your hands. You see, that's the result of having been with the Lord for a while. That's why the Lord said, Pero sa inyo, sino ako? But to you, but who do you say I am? He was asking him now, the 12 disciples. And among the 12 disciples, one came out telling everybody this revelation. And in fact, most likely, Peter was even surprised because the words that he had spoken was not even his own. According to the word of the Lord, it was revealed to him by the Holy Spirit. Now, how can the Holy Spirit reveal to you if you do not have a relationship with God? 
You see, he already had a relationship with Jesus. But when you look at it, when you look at Peter, and you say, how can he have a relationship with the Lord when he is a weakling? And dami niyang mga kasalanan, marami siyang nagagawa. He actually put his feet into his mouth. I mean, he was an impulsive person. He can talk loud and then not even thinking about it. That was the kind of a person that God is wanting to use. When you are ready to receive from the Holy Spirit, the Lord reveals to you something. You see, God, para sa atin, siya ang ating Lord. And he recognized, or na-recognized naman ang Lord, na meron tayong mga, yung mga weakness natin. But that does not in any way stop the Lord from revealing to us ang mga bagay na dapat nating malaman. Kaya sabi niya, and I also say to you, sabi niya kay Peter after revealing yung sinabi ni Lord, I mean ni Peter, sabi niya ito, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Of course, there were a lot of misinterpretation or misrepresentation as far as this is concerned. Sabi nila si Peter daw ang na-establish ng church, kaya nagiging head sa isang church. Yes, he was the head of yung sa early church. Siya ang spokesman. Everybody's coming to him. But the Lord was actually referring to something else. You see, you need to understand ang discourse nila, ang pinag-uusapan nila. Pinag-uusapan nila ang Lord. Pinag-uusapan niya. And sabi niya, and upon this rock, and upon this revelation, and upon the faith that you have put into your heart, sabi niya, I will establish my church. I will establish my church. Ano ang sinabi ni Lord dito? So upon this revelation, the church is built or was built. He is Christ, the Son of the living God. Upon this revelation, that He is the Messiah, the Son of God. Upon this revelation, I will build my church. Amen. So it was not built on someone else. Life it was built on this revelation that Jesus indeed is the Messiah. And from this, I'm going to build my church. So later on, you will find out, even Paul himself tried to, to erase this mentality of yubang kanya-kanya. Even in the, book of, I mean, in the book of Corinthians, that was one of the things that Paul had really spoken of so hardly. And sabi nila, some of you claim na kayo ay kasama ni Apollos, who was Apollos, by the way. Apollos was actually a person who was good at exhortation. He was so eloquent in sharing the scripture. And sabi nila, we, we would rather have Apollos with us. Dahil talagang when he explains the scriptures, talagang klarong klaro. And the others actually are saying, well, you can have Apollos, but we really like Paul. Ano ang sabi nila? Dahil si Paul, actually daw, ay, he, he has been a church planter. And others say, si Peter ang samin, kasi si Peter, siya yung pinaka-leader. Ng, so everybody's thinking, and then everybody's saying, okay, okay, enough. Now you have claimed na you belong to this, you belong to that, you belong to this person. And he said, ang iba naman sabi nila, with all pride, sabi nila, kami, wala, we are Christians. You see, that's another faction that was created inside the church. They did not understand that the church is Jesus Christ. He is, I mean, he established the church and we are the church of the living God. He established us. It is the Lord. Amen. Yes, I've been able to get, get rid of that kind of mentality. I want you to focus on the one who established the church, Jesus Christ. And that, one, that can bring us together in unity. Now think about this. Kasi ang sinabi dito sa, sa, sa 17, and Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjuna, for, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but by my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and on this rock, he was, his name was changed. And on this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not prevail against it. He said, I will build my church. 
e, kung ating ano pa ano yung gulay gulayan gulay gulayon gulay gulayan pag bulay 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 bio akala ko gulay gulayan pag ating bulay bulayan yan in other words speak words one at a time you will find out a lot of great things sabi niya ay ay who declared that jesus christ That's why according to the language of Paul, even in the book of Ephesians, he said, Jesus is the head of the church. He is the one that have given life to the church. It's not, it's not somebody. Although the Lord's desire is everybody will, will do their part, all the gift things that God has given them, that they will work on it and that they, this, this will cause an inspiration to everybody helping each other. But he said, I build The church, the one word, I, it refers to God himself. I will, nobody else, but I will, according to Jesus Christ. Amen. And then he said, I will. You think about that word, because that is a very important word. Because the will, the word will there has something to do with a process. I will build. He did not say, the church is already built. No, I will build my church because the church is composed of people not only during our generation, but those who will believe in the future, they belong to the church. I will. He continues to build us up. Now, what is another implication of that? There is one thing. Another implication of when he said, I will, is that my spirit, my presence in you will continually help you help you that you grow in the Lord better and better and, 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 and experience in you ay magiging maganda sa Panginoon. I will, I will. I will continue to work in your life. Have you noticed na meron pa rin mga bagay na ginagawa natin na ayaw natin? But you have been in the church for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. And sometimes we are hoping that those who are already six months in the Lord, that they grow, mature. We cannot. I mean, of course, that the desire of the Lord that we grow from day to day, from glory to glory. But the Lord is still working. He is still working in me. He is still working in your life. I will build my church. Because he is referring to the people who have actually accepted the Lord as Savior of their lives. This is not anyone's church. This is God's church. And because he knows the composition of the church, some come early, the others come lately. Can you just imagine the kind of the effort that the Lord is doing through his church? You know, do you wonder, is it just... A normal thing to ask somebody who are here for the first time. Baby, I see the hand of those na nagpataas ng kamay kanina. Pagkitaas ng kamay, you, have he you are here for the first time. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? How about second time? Fourth time? Why we ask you, it's not only because we want to, to welcome you. But you see, we have a responsibility to help you grow in the Lord. And the first thing that we can do actually is just shake your hands and, and introduce ourselves. And perhaps at the end of the service, we can have time with you. You are being welcomed into a family that is so strange to you. The voices perhaps are not like the voices that you heard. The things that are being done in the church may not be the same thing that you think about. But you have infused yourself into the church by coming and we really appreciate that very much. But the church should never expect somebody who comes for the first time and say, you behave. Until now, we still have to behave. Tayo. Tayong mga medyo matatanda na, we still have to behave. Last I, yesterday, sabi nga nila, Tinawag nila kasi may pakulo sila doon sa kasal ni General Gatera. Uh, who, are here, uh, who are here, couple, now you have been married for so much. Then finally, they reduce it to 25 up na. And there were probably four of them. 
And I was listening to them and say, one was married for 25 years. Others were married for 26, 27. And the last one actually was 38. And sabi ko, they are short of two. Kami ni Sally magiging 40. 40 na tayo lang. Yeah. You look like you are still 40. <laughs> Kasi yun ang pag-asawa namin. That was the time when I, I knew her. But anyway, when you look at that, you are amused. And, and, and the way they speak, many of them, some of them were actually officers, uh, military. By the way, si Colonel Gatera, I mean, General Gatera, nandyan sa Camp Krami. He wanted me to go one time and just visit him. And I said, okay, I'll, I'll do that. I'll do that. But anyway, sabi niya dito, na our church is actually established. But then this is being established when people are being or coming and coming. The church beginning, the church that is beginning to grow and grow. But we have to understand this, that some come earlier and some come later. But nevertheless, they are all members of the body of Christ. And we need to understand that, that they should always, or we, they should always find us, and I think arms are actually uh, open para sa kanila. Now as a church, because of this, because of this situation, na atayo ang church is actually like this, ang component ng church, meron mga bago, meron, we, we need to really behave ourselves. I mean, behave. I mean, I do not know what you mean. Because palagi naman kami nagbe-behave, lalo na pag wala kayo, nagbe-behave naman kami. Pero what I'm saying is that you do not fully understand the, 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 the level of understanding of everybody, even sa kanilang spiritual lives. But the Lord said, I will. Kaya yung word na will, that gives us an allowance, hindi lang para sa atin, kundi sa bawat isa. That we need to be sincerely, yung sincere talaga, na understand natin ang kalagayan ng ibang tao. That I would certainly, certainly become so sincere in my dealing with you. And then he said, I will, and then build, build, he's the master builder. And the word my there is actually in capital letter. My, my, my church. Now when it comes to the word church, we are talk, he is talking about the people who congregate. The people who have the privilege of accepting Jesus as their personal savior. Through the preaching of the gospel, through witnesses. These are the people that are being built to become the church of God. So he said, I will build this church. So with this, with, with this throat in mind, we need to understand what the church is really. Is. Ano ba talaga ang church? When it, he said, I will build my church, I have established you. I have put you on earth for a purpose. And what are we really, what are really our functions as a church? The denomination can probably line up he can put or the denomination can, can write a lot of things about qualification and all the privileges that a member of the church could have. But when it comes sa, sa church, the church of Jesus Christ, is not simply young, you are enlisted in there. But we are talking about what this institution is all about. Let me tell you with the first one. This is actually found in Matthew chapter 18, verse 17. According to verse 17, and if he refuses to hear them, tell it to the church. But if he refuses even to hear the church, let him to be or be to you like a heathen or a tax collector. Now, the background of this is if there is someone who is actually, who keeps on troubling the church, who, who keeps on bringing in a lot of problem to the church, Talagang nanggugulo. Meron din siyang kasalanan sa kanyang sarili. He cannot even understand what he is doing. In other words, he is sinning against the church. He is sinning against sa kanyang sarili at sa Lord. Pero ang pinakita dito, dito, sabi niya, those who actually know about the situation, then to talk to him in private. 
we have to understand. If somebody is sinning, we have to talk to the person in private. And if you know, if there are others who know about the situation, call these witnesses and talk to him. But then he said, if he continues to do that and does not listen to you, the last, the last thing that you can do is bring the person to the church for reconciliation. Now, this is what I see. The church is not there to judge. When someone is actually failing in his life, even if we see like relationships that are broken and we see like some men are leaving their families and, and, and having their own and then asawa together with the children. We, and then may mga iba iba pa nangyari. We do not immediately, uh, we do not condemn them. We do not judge them. Because if we have done our best, there is a possibility of this one thing. And this is one of the things that I'd like really to drive out. The church is to be a place of restoration. This is where hurting people are brought together to be restored back to the right relationship with the Lord. One big thing that the church should be doing that we are instruments of God's restoration process. It is going to be very difficult for someone who has been doing bad in his life. It's compared to, to a, you know, parang scrabble yung isa. Yung, you pick up the pieces. Hindi illegal. Ano yung tawag nun? Puzzle. You know, we are like, nothing life is like a puzzle. Paminsan, minsan, ay talagang nawawala yung mga parts and you do not know saan na doon. We try to gather them with all the tears that we have. Nobody is helping us. But the church, according to the word of the Lord, is the one that would bring restoration to the person. Restoration to where? To God first and then to the church. So that they will find themselves again serving the Lord inside the church. The bad thing sometimes that can happen to a church is this. When we... It, Para sa atin, enough na. You have done so much in life and we cannot take it anymore. So we are going to come up with the resolution and then we drive you away from the church. Of course, the Bible tells us he can be considered a heathen or a tax collector or a sinner. But that does not necessarily mean that you do not or you lose all the effort in trying to restore the person back to his relationship with the Lord. The church has been given the task of the Lord to restore people who have been hurting. That's why we need to be to have people. Kanina, I, I, I wanted to declare, Kanina, I was looking at the children while Sally was actually praying. Tinignan ko sila. Some of them, siguro, serious. Yung iba, alam mo naman mga bata. I wanted to declare, and in fact, personally, I declared, some of them will become prophets. Some of them will become teachers of the word. Some of them be, will become pastors. You see, those are words that you can give to these children. They may not understand it. But what we are actually trying to say is this. You are now beginning to lay down an Islam foundation para sa mga kabataan that one day they will become such a kind of a person God wants them to be. When we were young, so many people probably have have spoken well about us. Ito, parang magiging doctor ito. Parang, si, si General Gatera, though, when he was pursuing his wife, she is tall. And she is shorter. Talagang ganyan. Ang asawa babae, ganyan, kata, kataas. Taas. Katangkad. Siya, mababa. Sa ang dream pala niya is, I'd like to marry a lady who, is, who has a title, a doctora, engineer, whatever. You lang ang dream niya. Second, taller than I am. Lo and behold, he was given a tall lady. I mean, she is tall. I mean, she is tall. When I, 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 uh, I do not know whether it will come out in the media, but when I was standing next to them because the son of initiating minister, I wouldn't have the privilege of having that picture with them. I mean, we are almost like the same. 
medyo matangkad ako, pero matangkad and then si General Gatera talaga. Pero pala, he was already desiring in his heart. He says, so when you look at all these kids, you desire something for them. When you see people coming into the church, how I wish and pray that all of us will look at them and say, he can be a good person here. He can be that, that effective person inside the church. Dream big dreams for your brothers and sisters in the Lord, not just for you. Paki kwanda yung you face to face. Oh, by the way, kung nabubuod kayo sa ganito, pero just face to face, kasi talagang ganito ako magpipreach. Face to face. Sabihin mo, I declare. Ah, uh, Face to face, sa iba. Huwag na sa akin, ang dami na Hindi ko kaya yung lahat sa inyo. Pero yung, sa isa lang. Face to face, eye to eye. Okay? I declare that God is going to bless you and that you will become kayo ng bahala mag, mag, mag sumpay, mag, magdagdag, magdugtong. Sabi mo, I declare that God is going to make you a millionaire. Oh, may nakaisip ba ng ganyan? That you will become a millionaire, pero huwag lang kayong bumili ng luto, okay? Dito lang, let the Lord bless you. You will become a millionaire. Hallelujah. Sa mga young people, sabihin mo, you will become a doctor. Ang isa lang ang hindi talaga na, na, na kwan sa akin. Ang daming nag-declare sa akin when I was young. Ikaw ang magiging politiko. I praise the Lord, hindi. But I praise the Lord. I mean, words are too strong. So everybody's coming into the church. God is building. And then when you look at all those, regardless of their status, whether they are weak or not, accept everybody, amen? So it is a place of restoration, especially to people who are hurting and sinning. What is the church supposed to be doing? Make every effort to forgive and restore a brother who sinned against God. Make every effort. Even if somebody has hurt you, make every effort to reconcile with the person, regardless whether you are the person who has been offended. Make every effort. Amen. That's the church. Because the church is supposed to be a place of restoration. And sometimes you think, okay, it's the church, capital city. No, you. Sabihin mo nga sa kapatid mo, you. Make every effort to reconcile the person back to the Lord. And sometimes, you know, like we discipline some pastors. I, I was talking to some of our leaders. Uh, it turned out na yung pagpunta ko doon ay medyo inagiging series of meetings. They will probably hear me talk about this. It's a serious submitting. But one, one person, one pastor would say, I never have been visited by my supervisor. That's a lot. Okay? But let me tell you this. People long for someone to minister because they are hurting. I really do not know how many of you are actually hurting. Some of you are still preoccupied with a lot of things in the past. Something that you cannot just get away from. But this is the right place where people will begin to share our joys and even our hurts so that we can be restored back to God. Another one, of course, is found in Acts chapter 14, verse 23. According to the word of the Lord, so when they had appointed elders in every church and prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord in whom they had believed. Now, the background of this was that even Paul himself, you know, Paul had, had been persecuted. He was stoned. As Abinel, he was left like he was dead. But the people, the congregation actually helped him and he revived. And he was made to escape on the other way. Uh, using other ways, other highways, rather than going the normal way. But the Bible tells us, sabi nila, and then he began to encourage everybody that the church should be strengthened and be encouraged all the time. 
Nakita ni Paul that that was actually what was needed in the life of the people. We need so much encouragement. And to do that is we need to appoint elders. What are elders for? Think about that. What are, well, sa atin dito, meron tayong council. Meron tayong mga ministry heads. What, why are we there? For every position that we hold, there is so much responsibilities that go with it. Don't you know that if you stand as a leader in the church, you are here given by the task of nurturing the people. That's why the church is supposed to be, supposed to be a church where everybody can be nurtured with the word of God. Amen. What, what are we doing in some other ministries? It is for nurturing purposes. If you have your Bible study with you, if you have your Bible study, what is your goal in your Bible study? Is that it is not just simply sharing the word and that's it, and you go. More than studying the word, nurturing, helping them grow in the Lord. Listening to their testimonies. And the only way for you to understand that is in your Bible study, you need to ask them to give the testimony of what this Bible study is doing in their own lives. We praise God for Bible studies that are immediately after that, there are a lot of eatings. I praise the Lord for that. And dahil part na yan ng Filipino culture. But don't you know that Filipino culture a very similar culture na mga hudiyo. Meron din silang eating time. So nakupya natin, nakupya yata natin yan. But there is so much, kaya nga meron silang mga um, uh, yung Suffer, mga ganon, itawag nila mga love feast, dahil they love to congregate and start having fellowship with one another. But this one thing that should never, never be taken away from any ministry that we do, nurturing. Paul did not have the opportunity anymore to stay and, and look after the church. He was so persecuted. In fact, the church force him to vacate and, and leave and go somewhere else because God has some plans for him in other places. But this is what Paul has said, this church needs strengthening and encouragement. We should not be, you know, we should not be thinking na dahil lumalaki ang church na lahat na lang nun turing nandiyan. Because for Mr. Minsan, meron din pumapasok si church. They are coming from other churches and we are happy to welcome you. And if it is possible, if it is possible, if you are here for temporary basis lang, dahil you want, dahil si schedule kaya, if possible, nandoon yung church. You have been growing doon sa church na yun. But if you decide to stay in this church because you are so blessed, then stay and be blessed continually. If you think you are being nurtured and you are being encouraged in this church, then stay. But if you feel like going back to your church, go ahead and be restored back to that family because you belong to that church. But we are always welcome Para sa inyo, you are always welcome to come and receive some nurture. But let me tell you this one thing. Wherever you go, there is a church that God has established and you can be nurtured there. Like for example, because I consider this my family church now, a time will come when I will no longer be with you. So I'll find another church. It's simple as that one. But I will go to a church that will nurture me. A church that will strengthen my faith. A church that will encourage me when I am down. It is supposed to be a church where everything that comes out of our mouth, especially at the hearing of other people, words that are so positive. Because positive words encourage people. 
and he tells us to be strong. The other one is, it is a church, the church. You are talking about one God and one church. So if indeed God is God of this church, this church should be a place of honor and respect. Are you there? This church is supposed to be a place of honor and respect. This and background nito, sabi nga lang sa 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 22, what? Do you not have houses to eat and drink in? Or do you despise the church of God and shame those who have nothing? What shall I say to you? Shall I praise you in this? I do not praise you. Now, the background of this was when they were actually going to the church. Before we do that, it was announced, we will have our Lord's Supper. And everyone is going there preparing themselves because they have a misunderstanding about the Lord's Supper. Ang iba sa kanila, siguro naka-atena, ay uh, may kunti lang pero kailangan kumain. Ang sabi ni Paul, are you showing yourself na dahil busog kayo that you are much better than the other people? And others were actually preparing for something else. They drink, they talk. It is, they, they have a drinking spree inside the church. Dahil Lord Supper, kaya merong inuman. Yung iba naman, nadala, umiinom muna. Pagdating sa church, drunk. And this is the rebuke of the Lord through Paul. Abina, you eat, you show to the people that you have something in your home. And he says, some of you are actually doing the other thing around and, and showing that you are a misguided and not a person that is actually under the control of the Spirit. And he said, are you, are you asking me to praise you because you are there, your presence is there. No. Paul is said, your presence does not in any way help you at all. What is important is your heart again. Sabihin mo nga, kapatid mo again, sabihin, what is important is what's going on in your heart. Our heart, our attitude is most important sa atin. Amen? Ang ating attitude, and I always I always talk about this attitude. You character nothing, an attitude nothing. The way we deal with people, attitude is very important. And in as much as I am a church of God, me, God established me, and He's still working in me. It is supposed to be a place of honor. And sometimes we dishonor God by the acts that we do. But as a church like this, it should be a place of honor and respect. Now, if you look at Ephesians chapter 5, verse 29, I have that scripture here. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourished and cherished it just as the Lord does the church. No one ever hates his own body. But what is he doing? But nurture it. Did you hear that? So in others, when we come to church and we consider this a church, we need to give as much respect and honor to this church. Amen. Pastors come and go. One day I'm going away. I will still be alive. I will be in Cebu. One day I'm going to step down as a transition pastor. But I'd like to see I'd like to put into my heart a remembrance that this church respect and honor one another. Amen? That we have a place, we have a place in our hearts for everybody. That we honor. That we honor. And some people just could not, could not accept that. Because sometimes they consider the church as if like, I, I, I remember way back when the church was actually struggling, not the church in a sense, but some people were actually causing a lot of stirring up in the church, not here, but in Mindanao. One person, two. And one is actually still being ridden until today. But they always tell everybody, if we will be out of this church, the church will, will not have money. 
because they thought they are the ones supporting the church. Proud people. Oh, by the way, it's not us who build the church. It's Jesus Christ. If the church needs money, he is going to give it. He is the one that will provide. May isang tao talagang ino-open na yung kuha niya, ang kapal ng pera. Bigay lang siya ng bigay. This is the person who said, this church will not last because wala na ang tayo nila. Oh, I tell you. The person, one person is actually just mocking everybody. And he is not being restored. A lot of efforts have been given him, but he is still in bed. The church should be a place of honor. When I look at you, you are all honorable. You need to be respected. Sabihin mo aga sa kapatid mo, my respect is in you. Sabihin mo, I respect you. I honor you. In fact, Paul went beyond that. Sabihin na, I would consider you much better than I am. Amen? Much better than I am. A place of honor and respect. Kaya nga sabi niya sa Ephesians na one time sabi niya, what can, what can replace such a, rela a relationship or what can surpass a loving relationship between the husband and the wife? Remember the same, the chapter 5, verse 25, sabi niya, husband loves your wives, and then wives submit to your husband. And then he said, the same way that Jesus Christ loved the church. Now, what relationship can surpass that? Nothing. If we give due respect to the wives or to the husband, you are a real church. Amen? Respect, honor. Honor the church. Sabi niya, sa kanina sabi niya, for no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. Just as the Lord does the church. Nag-nurture na, then now, binibigyan pa natin ng honor ang bawat isa. So here, nobody will disrespect you. In this church, nobody will disrespect you. In this church, you will be given honor. Honor, giving honor to those where honor is due. You deserve a big club offering. Because the Lord is still building you. Still building you. Amen? Amen. Are you there? I'm almost done. The other one is that as a body of believers, you are willing to suffer for the church. Willing to suffer for the church. We are willing to suffer for everybody. Anushinabi is a Colossians chapter 1 verse 24. I now rejoice in my sufferings for you and fill up my flesh what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ for the sake of his body, which is the church. Right now, I rejoice in my sufferings. Of course, the sufferings that Paul was talking about was suffering because of Jesus Christ. Meron tayo mga sufferings because of wrongdoings. But the suffering that Paul is actually talking about is the suffering that he is experiencing from day to day was for the sake of Jesus. He suffered for Jesus Christ, for the church, for the church. Can you just imagine a person who would be traveling and he had seven shipwrecked? Yung tabag nila, pag na shipwreck ka na, nalunon na yung barko mo nung una, parang na phobia ka na, ayaw mo nang sumakay. Lalo na yung pag nakasakay kay sa eroplano o biglang bumagsak, ayaw mo nang sumakay ulit. Ay, hindi ka na rin makasakay kasi kasama ka doon. Pero what we are saying, what if you, re, you survive? I mean, you don't want to, to ride. Ang dami yung mga tao na ayaw nila talagang sumakay ng barko. Talagang may phobia sila. 
talagang yung ayaw lang nila, natatakot sila. Now you ask me, dahil I cross the ocean from Comigin to Cagayan de Oro. Every time, mag-travel kami. Nung una, nagtitinda pa si tatay ng kupras, dinadala namin doon. Either they are way big ones or smooth. It's okay. Wala pang nalunod. But, but for the sake of Christ, sabi ni Paul, I have suffered a lot for the church. But then he said, I rejoice. So the church is supposed to be rejoicing. We are willing to suffer for everyone. In other words, you get out of your comfort room. I mean, really comfort room. Comfort zone. <laughs> oh, comfort zone. And there's a comfort room. Uh, yeah, wherever you go, sasabihin mo doon sa America, may I know where the CR is? What's that? Ayaw nila ng comfort uh, CR. Com ano tawag natin yan? Comfort room. Ayaw nila tawagin ng comfort room ang CR doon. Ang tawag nila restroom. Doon ka magkapahinga. So, sa palagay ko, pareho lang yan eh. Pareha lang. Pero the church, yung life ng isang believer, may sufferings din yan. And suffering sometimes sa atin, but then we have other people around us that we need to suffer with. Amen? Hindi ako magtatagal dito. Pero what we are saying is, even if the church is going through a lot of turmoil, even if the church is actually going through a lot of problems, stay there to be a comfort to everyone who sees you. Even if the church is being stirred up, your presence actually will give comfort to those who would decide to stay. Hallelujah. Kahit na may problema ang church, be there. Because kahit saan ka pa pumunta, may problema. There are a lot of problems. I tell you, sabihin ko na sa iyo, siguro mas maliit pa yun itong problema natin kaysa kanila. But there is no comparison actually dahil iba-iba ang klase ng mga problema. But if the church is going through some problem, your presence is most important. If you really love the church, stay. Stay. Be there. Be someone that actually we can lean on. Stay. Don't go. And if you decide to go, then go. May God's blessing be with you. Amen? It is the body of Christ, any person in the body of Christ who is actually willing to suffer for the church regardless of what's going to happen. Lalo pang ang church medyo ganun. Stay there. Yung pastor na preach pag nakita ka, I praise the Lord. Okay? Kahit na may bagyo, mayroong sampo dyan. Kaya sabi nila, Pastor, kung may bagyo, pagkatapos dalawa lang ang nagsipot, ang asawa mo at saka yung apo mo, I will preach as if I will be preaching to 500 people. Amen. Pero huwag kayong umalis. Huwag kayong umalis. Anyway, alis ako eh. But don't, don't go. No, no. I'm just kidding. But what I'm saying is, you are here not only to enjoy a lot of things, but also to suffer with the church. Finally, a church is supposed to be a church of relief. Mayroong mga churches na tawag natin mga komisari. Mayroong silang komisari. Sa atin, mayroong tayong agapi. It's actually a reflection or one way or another. It's telling the church that we have some source of income that we can actually share to those who are actually in need. Okay? Kaya nga tinawag na komisari. Don't you know that the church, I mentioned this before, that the church is like a hospital. It is a hospital for people who are suffering spiritually, who are hurting. Sabi ni Pastor Ed at saka ni Pastor, Pastora Raquel, sabi niya, Pastor, itong mga sa Hong Kong ba, halos lahat mga babae na dyan, mga OFWs, sa masaya sila. 
Masaya sila. They perform, they do their ministry, everybody's happy. They congregate and talk and but then he said, when they are alone, they cry. When they are alone, they cry. Dahil sa nangyayari sa kanilang family dito sa Pilipinas, some of them do not have a husband anymore. Because when they went to work outside, the husband has left the family. These are conditions na mga tao. We need to be a church where we can give relief. Yung nare-relieve ang kanilang sarili. Kaya po, minsan-minsan, we have an altar call for those who are actually hurting. Because we need to be relieved from that. However, Paul was saying, if any believing man or woman has widows, let them relieve them and do not let the church be burdened that it may relieve those who are really widows. Now, here is the thing. Merong mga widows. How many widows do we have in the church? I mean, one, Sister Betty, Sister, two, sino pa? Si, si Nell, si Nelly, ay very fresh pa yan. And we, we continue to pray for her. Sino pa ang mga widows? Three, four, five. Ang sabi ng church, if nobody is able to take care of you, the church should take care of you. If you do not have work, you have no SSS. You are supposed to be the recipient of the agape offering. Amen. If you have no work, you have no more family, the church is supposed to be your home and the church should provide. Wala mang amen dito, ha? This is the church for the widows. Pero, bakit hindi sinama ni Lord ang mga widowers? Ang mga lalaki. Bakit hindi sinama? Kasi mga lalaki, meron ba mga widowers dito? Yung wala ka ng asawa ba? Namatay na? Ah, wala. Ay, praise the Lord. Talagang very intact. Kasi ang mga widowers daw, na widow na sila, palaging nakaforma. Wala pang one month, naghahanap na. <laughs> Pero ang mga, I don't know, but ang mga babae daw, they grieve to the death. Talagang they grieve. Kaya bihira mong ma, 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 ma-convince ang widow to love again. Unless they find someone who is just like their former husband. Amen? Ang lakas ng imi ng asawa ko. <laughs> but what we are saying here is that if there are people, who, if there are widows that cannot afford, let the church take care of them. And let me go beyond that. Single ladies na walang SSS but they are growing older, they have no place to go. This church should be their home. Amen? Ang question lang ni Paul is this. If you are a widow and you are young and you are thinking of remarrying, then Paul said, you don't, you don't need the help of the church because somebody will take care of you. Okay? Now I'm just simply telling you about this church and I'm going to end with this. I'm just telling you about these simple things that we can do about the church. Because a very important thing about the church is this, that the church is really an establishment built by Jesus Christ to live according to the will of God. Everything, love, care, protection, respect, nandiyan. Supposed to be the church. Hallelujah. As I close, I'd like everybody to please stand up. Gusto ko lang basahin ang isang verse or two verses. We have to understand this, that even if we have differences, 
we still belong to the same church. We should keep on strengthening the churches or the church. According to Acts chapter 15, verse 41, we need to strengthen the church continually. But in 1 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 13 to 14, ang sabi ni Paul, for this reason we also thank God without ceasing because when you receive the word of God, which you heard from us, you welcome it not as the word of men, but as it is in the truth, the word of God, which also effectively works in you who believe. For you, brethren, because for you, brethren, became imitators of the churches of God, which are in Judea, in Christ Jesus. For you also suffered the same things from your own countrymen, just as they did from the Judeans. Be ye imitators. Be ye imitators. He's talking about the suffering churches. He's talking about the church that really love each other. Ang aking makita noon, if I am going to live their life noon, think about this. When they were persecuted in Rome, there was no other place to go but to go to the caves. Meron tinatawag nila mga caves, tawag nila catacombs. They were built by men. Inside the catacombs, or we call it caves, there are compartments. Don't you know that during that time, the believers in Christ would hide there by families. And we say, they are refugees? No. They are a church. And one Praetorian guard happened to get inside the catacomb. And he saw all these compartments. He actually was there to persecute. When he went into the inner chamber, he found the church reading the scripture, praying together with tears. And that military officer got converted. Suffering for Jesus Christ. Trying to stand up as a church, a real church. All of them were actually being persecuted, but they found comfort with the presence of God, the word of God, and the presence of the other believers. If I am coming into this church, I'd like to see comfort. I'd like to see that someone cares for me. I think that is our desire. And that is what the church is all about. One God, one church. Amen. Let us pray, Father. We thank you for the church that you have established. We cannot imagine how, how difficult and scary for the early church to be in public worshiping you. We have all the freedom. We can come to this church building and freely worship you. But when our minds are brought back to where they started, there was a church, living church, suffering for the sake of Christ and the gospel, who found comfort in the reading of the word, found comfort when they pray to the God who loved them. But they also found comfort in the presence of the other believers. May we have that sense of just desiring, O oh Father, to be in a church where love is so overwhelming. And Lord, we pray that this will be that church 
This is the church. Thank you, Lord, where we can find comfort and love. Thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you for everything. The church is also a place where you can find healing. Can I see the hands of those who are sick to raise your hand as I pray? Those who are sick, those who are taking examination, meru examination tawag nila let. Ano ba yung let? Basta. Okay. So we will also pray for them. For those who are sick, I'd like you to just raise your hand. For those who are sick, I'd like you to stand on the aisle. Yung may mga sakit, stand on the aisle. Stand on the aisle. Just right there, where you are. Okay, stand on the aisle. Stand. If you are not feeling well, stand on the aisle, okay? Now, I'd like those who are actually standing next to you, I'd like you to surround them and touch them. Lay your hands on those who are on the aisles right now. Just touch them. Just lay your hands on their shoulder or their head. And let us believe God that God is going to heal them right now. In the name of Jesus, we declare healing for all of our brothers and sisters who are sick, Lord. In the name of Jesus, only you know, Lord. Only you know about their condition. But we thank you that you have given us the spirit of love where we can lay our hands and pray for those who are sick right now. And we will believe with them. They have been, they have been expecting healing from you. And now is the right time for them to receive that healing by faith in Jesus' name. We receive your healing, O oh God, on behalf of these who are in need of your healing. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. For your glory and for your honor. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for there is a church that can pray for them. And we receive your healing now. In Jesus' name. And everyone say, Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. You will be seated. Praise the Lord.